Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Red Alert Alternative with me, Dr. J. I totally didn't steal that intro from Ortega because I said hello instead of greetings. So for the second installment of the Red Alert Alternative Director's Cut, we are going to play Allies Mission 10, The Siege of Berlin. And as you can see, I have a whole lot of playtest save files for this mod, because as you can imagine, I've playtested the heck out of it. Now, this mission? mission has not changed dramatically from the version Ortega played, um, but I made some tweaks to the AI-controlled ally, and this mission seemed to be something of a fan favorite, so that's how come I've chosen to play this one next. And I made some changes to the audio balance so that hopefully the game audio will be a little louder now, still without overwhelming my voice. The game audio sounds insanely loud in my headphones, but I have checked the audio balance and it seems like hopefully it should be fairly reasonable for, um, for the final video and for you listeners. So, about the changes to the AI-controlled ally. First of all, once again, I've changed them from an inappropriate GDI gold color to a more not-appropriate grayish tone. And I've made some tweaks to the teams that they build. So in Red Alert, you have several different ways that you can uh, set up the AI and their behavior. You can basically put them into skirmish mode and just let them build absolutely anything they want and have no control over them at all. I have not done that for a single mission in the campaign because I think that's not as interesting. Or uh, another way you can do it is you can set up team types for them to build and then just basically tell them, okay, now build those team types however you want. It's up to you which teams you want to build. And then the final way is you can assume almost total control and tell them what to build and when to build it. Uh, I sometimes use the second approach and sometimes the third approach. And for this mission, uh, I use the second approach where I give the AI a list of team types to build and I just let it decide when to build those team types. Now, I have made a couple of the team types larger so that the AI-controlled ally will send out slightly larger forces at a time. And the other change I made is there was a single team type where I told them to build an APC and some rocket soldiers and then load the rocket soldiers into the APC. Even though that's only a single one of the team types of quite a few different ones that I gave them the option to build, I noticed that the AI-controlled ally loved to absolutely spam APCs in this mission for some reason. Which annoyed me. Um, I didn't really like that they just built APCs all over the place when that was only one of their available team types. So I just got rid of it. Um, I took away that toy because they abused it, so they're not allowed to build the APC team anymore. Uh, so, that's pretty much it. Um, so, your a AI-controlled ally is still not brilliant or super powerful. Just not going to win the mission for you, because that would be lame. But, uh, there's been some tweaks. Maybe they'll be a little bit... Maybe they'll be a little bit more useful, or maybe not. We'll find out because I actually haven't even tested this mission since making the changes. So this is simultaneously a uh, showcase of some changes and a playtest of those changes. I'm not expecting that there's going to be large differences, to be honest with you. Um, you may have noticed, if you were paying close attention earlier, that I had a tank selected and that I was clicking around, telling the tank to go to different locations. And that it continued firing while it was doing that. And also that I clicked and told it to go here, and then clicked and told it to go here, and that it went here first, and then here. 
I was using an undocumented command in the Red Alert engine called the Q move. Uh, I think Q as in the word Q-U-E-U-E, -E, but you also activate it by pressing that uh, by pressing the Q key. And um, it's unbelievably useful because you can tell units to attack things, hold down Q, tell them to move, and they will continue moving and firing at the same time, and they basically queue up waypoints, as you just saw there, where they'll go the first place you click, and then the second place, and then the third place, and so on. It is unbelievably useful. It dramatically increases the effectiveness of your units to have them use this feature. Um, it is an absolute necessity to use Q-Move to play Red Alert competitively in multiplayer. You, you have to Q-Move, uh, otherwise people who do will destroy you if you don't do it. Uh, I did make sure to test the mod without ever Q-Moving to ensure that it's possible to win without doing it because a lot of people don't know about it. Uh, however, since I already know that it's possible to clear the mod without using it, and since it's very useful, I I'm going to queue move all over the place, at, at least when I'm thinking about it. Since, as I already explained in the first episode, I have discovered that uh, commentating and playing at the same time is actually pretty hard. And that harvester is probably going to die. Alright, um... Oh, maybe not. Okay, I think I saved him. I'm going to want to build uh, defense over there, though. Okay, please finish them off, guys. Like, I don't want you to just kill a few of them. There we go. Okay, um, right. That's gonna be a problem. I probably should have built helicopters to deal with those first. Yeah, it's definitely still the case that, um, I play a lot worse commentating and playing at the same time. I'll get better at it as I do more playthroughs and get more custom telping. So I will say that the AI ally is building a more sensible assortment of units here. Um, not spamming APCs all over the place, so that's that's a nice improvement. Uh, I don't, again, I don't expect them to be particularly effective still, but at least aesthetically, they're acting a little bit more intelligently, and they they look like Nod, which which I like. Hint at future things to come. Okay, so I'm going to build three helipads because three helicopters is enough to destroy. A Tesla coil in a single run, even if it's being repaired. And while I'm at it, I will continue spamming yes, sir. tanks for the yes, sir. Uh, giant tank push that I'm eventually going to have to do. Um, I did try to design the missions in this mod so that just brute force, um, just doing a giant tank rush, the classic CNC and Rattler tactic, the tank rush is... It's relatively unusual that a mission consists of nothing but building 8 billion tanks and sending them at your enemy. Because if you're playing a mod, you know, you're you're not a newbie at Red Alert. You've probably cleared the cleared the official campaigns, maybe play a lot of skirmish, maybe play a lot of multiplayer. So you know how to play the game. And you're probably really accustomed to tank rushing. Because it's the best strategy. So I tried to design the missions so that there's almost always more to the mission than just tank rushing. And so that's why in this case there's these Tesla coils that are really awkwardly placed so that even with a giant tank army you would suffer horrendous casualties just trying to brute force attack them. Uh, and so instead you need to find the enemy SAM sites, destroy them, build helicopters to take out the Tesla coils without sustaining any casualties. Obviously that component of the mission is similar to the GDI mission where you get orcas for the first time, so I'm certainly not going to say that's a completely original approach or anything. Uh, directly inspired by that particular GDI mission. Um, 
And of course, you also get the airstrikes in this mission once you have destroyed all the enemy SAM sites. And unlike in Base Red Alert, where the parrot bombs are laughably pathetic and terrible, I greatly increased their power so that they're actually good in this mod. Uh, although, they're highly inaccurate, as Ortega discovered in his LP, so although you can use them to destroy the enemy defensive structures, that's relatively difficult and awkward. So it's generally better to target larger... Mm, I'll recall my forces to defend against this. It's, uh, it's generally better to target larger structures, such as power plants. And obviously, production structures should be priority number one. Uh, so another thing that I don't think Ortega noticed while he was playing the mod, I'm not sure if any of the viewers noticed, maybe some did, but nobody called it out in the comments or anything. I made some changes to the economy in Red Alert. You may have just heard my cat, Jolene, meow there. Um, she thinks it's time to feed her. She's close to correct. It is going to be her dinner time pretty soon. Uh, so we might be hearing from her, just as an FYI. Anyway, what was I saying? Right. Uh, I made some changes to the economy in the rules.ini file. Uh, harvesters pull in, I think, 10% more credits per run when when they bring in ore and Tiberium. Um, obviously gems, but it got re-skinned as Tiberium for this mod. Which, 10% is actually a fairly significant difference. It allows you to set up a good economy with significantly fewer harvesters, actually. Like, three of them is enough for me to be cranking out a pretty good steady flow of units. It, it would take four of them, realistically, in base red alert. It seems like a relatively minor change, but I actually think that it... Uh, it feels better to me. I, I feel like... It, it, it's hard to explain. It, it just feels a little bit smoother that the... The ratio of amount of money you have to spend setting up your economy to get a good flow of production going just feels better to me with my change of making them pull in 10% more credits per run. And in addition to that, uh, refineries and silos can hold way, way more credits in this mod than they can in the base game. They can hold specifically 5,000 credits per refinery and per, um, and per silo. So, realistically, unless you're just not building much of anything, you very, very rarely need to build silos, which I, I think is better. I don't think it's a particularly interesting mechanic to just have to be constantly building silos. Well, I mean, realistically, you don't have to constantly build silos, because if you're good at the game, you're cranking out so many units that you never hit the credit limit. But it's a little bit more of a problem with my change where harvesters are pulling in 10% more credits. Like you can see here, I'm producing stuff almost constantly and I'm still over 4,000 credits. So I think it's nice to not have to just be building uh, silos to hold the extra credits. I need to be using my helicopters more. So that was another change that I made. And it's, again, it's more significant because I changed the economy than it would have been with the, the base credits per load value. Uh, so, I've destroyed all the SAM sites, so now I get the airstrike. As, as it tells me when it says bombers are inbound. Which means that it's going to start giving me the repeating airstrikes pretty soon here. Uh, now, there is a trigger that is supposedly to give the player a repeating super weapon. Uh, so there's a trigger, supposedly, that if you turn it on, you can, for example, 
give the player a recharging para drop so that once the player uses the para drop after a certain amount of time it recharges and he begins to get another one however this trigger has never worked when i've tried to use it now there's a couple possible reasons for that it could be that there's actually a bug in the editor that i use which i showed you in the previous episode Maybe it actually doesn't set that trigger correctly. I, I actually never bothered to verify yes, that, which I, I probably should have, but I don't know. I was too lazy. So that's one possibility. Or another possibility is that the editor works fine and sets that trigger correctly, but Red Alert itself is bugged and the trigger is squirrely and doesn't work right. Either of those is possible. I don't know which one it is. The upshot of that is that I can't use that trigger to give the player repeating parabombs. So the way that I do it instead is I give the player a one-time super weapon, which is set on a timer loop, because the give the player one-time super weapon trigger works just fine, unlike the repeating super weapon trigger. So I just have a timer loop set up that begins activating once all of the SAM sites are destroyed. That's the trigger for it. Which, um, each time the timer expires, it gives the player the para bombs uh, as a one-time super weapon. But in effect, it's a repeating super weapon because it's on a loop like that. Um, and because there's no voiceover for para bombs ready or airstrike ready, I don't know why, but there isn't. Seems pretty dumb to me. Seems like something that the player would want to know. But since there's no voiceover for that, I um, added that text message that says prepping airstrike. So that's the reason for it. So that the player knows that he's getting the airstrike and doesn't miss it due to the lack of a voiceover. Um, I'm just going to target somewhere random in this shroud with this airstrike in the hope of triggering the enemy's air defenses. Oh, or or triggering the reveal of Leon Von Essling's little inner base. Uh, and hopefully that'll reveal enough shroud that I can target the next airstrike more intelligently. And this mission's going pretty smoothly. I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, good. My ally finished off those Tesla coils. I'm now going to target that Tesla coil. And with all those Tesla coils destroyed, the way will be clear for my ally to actually attack the northern half of the enemy base. Good, good, good. This is exactly what I wanted. This is revealed enough of the enemy base that I can target my next airstrike better. Now, once these... Tesla's are destroyed. Hopefully my ally can begin actually launching attacks at the northern half of the enemy base. Now the enemy base here is giant. It is symmetrical. The top half is a mirror image of the bottom half. The southern half targets the player and the northern half targets the player's ally. So if your ally ever falls, the pressure on your position will double. So even if your allies' attacks are inept and ineffective, they are serving a useful purpose by soaking up attacks for you. I think I'm going to build another war factory so I can crank out yes, tanks sir. faster. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, and as I discussed in the previous episode, there's actually two separate red factions, USSR and Bad Guy. And even though this is one giant symmetrical base, the southern half is one faction and the northern half is the other. I actually don't remember which is which, but I would guess I set the southern half to be USSR and the northern half to be bad guy. I'm not positive about that, though. Oh, um, okay, that Sam site shot down one of my choppers, but I don't really care. They've done their job. They've cleared out the Tesla coils. All right, so I'm going to blow up this barracks and hopefully kill a bunch of the infantry there as well. All right, I saw the screen shake, so I think that barracks has been destroyed. They didn't kill as many infantry as I was hoping. Um, but I think I'm getting close to being ready to launch an attack on the position here. Oh, right, I was going to build a second war factory. 
I think I'm slowly getting a little better at commentating and playing at the same time. It is also very late uh, at night on a weekday, uh, which is to say a work day. So I'm also going to blame that for my lack of optimal play. I'm just going to make excuses all day long. It probably just makes me look bad, but I'll do it anyway. Okay, let's go ahead and do a tank rush and see how it does. Probably terrible, but we'll try it. I keep misclicking there. All right, get in there, tanks. Um, I think I'm going to have them go south so they don't come in the range of the enemy Tusk Coils. I'm going to want to drive them right up to the enemy's fixed artillery and destroy those first. And the pathing in Red Alert is not the best, as we're all well aware, so my tanks are just driving all over the place like a bunch of morons. They got in a range of Tesla coil, even though I didn't want them to. I'm going to keep them Q moving to make them slightly more difficult targets. Alright, now let's see if they can take out that Tesla coil. I mean, clearly they will, but we'll see what kind of casualties they take. Funnily enough, sometimes a Tesla Coil does do less damage if it hits a moving target, so it's still worth Q moving against a Tesla Coil, even though that's not guaranteed to work. Alright, now that we've punched a hole in the corner here, we can start destroying the enemy base. Oh, I got another airstrike. Um, I think that's a barracks. So we'll go ahead and blow it up. And I will Q move simultaneously with Alt Force Move to crush those infantry while attacking. Look at these advanced tactics. It, Q moving is difficult if there's a million enemies because you try to Q move but you just end up targeting another enemy instead. Alright, this attack is going to fail, which is unfortunate. I'll at least destroy more obstacles so that I can take out the next Tesla Coil, my next attack, and not have as much stuff in the way. And I am building tanks faster now that I have two war factories. Okay, I wasn't even able to wipe out that power plant, so that's disappointing. Hmm. I think I'm going to start building another refinery so I can really make sure that my economy stays strong. I don't want to ever be in a position where I don't have enough money to build stuff. Well, my ally is not being even remotely useful on the attack. So, I didn't, and again, I didn't expect that, but it's confirmed. So, the changes to the AI ally have not had a significant effect, but at least, at least he hasn't spammed APCs all over the place. That really bothered me. And at least he's gray now. I'm saying he, but, uh, Ortega suggested that maybe the ally commander here is Sierra. I honestly never gave much thought to who the ally commander here is. I kind of like the idea that it's Sierra. I don't know how well that jives with all the cutscenes because it's kind of established that Sierra is just a communications officer and not a commander. But honestly, I do sort of like the idea of Sierra being a commander and being the one who helps the player with this attack. So I might be perfectly willing to sort of retcon or you know, make changes to the idea, say that maybe she's not just a communications officer, maybe she is a fellow rebel commander and is helping you with this attack. Okay, I think that's enough guys for another another attack on the enemy's position. I'm sort of of two minds about whether to even play the entire mission through to completion, because Again, I think most people watching this will probably have come from Ortega's LP. Maybe I'll end up being wrong about that, but that's my expectation, which means you've already seen this mission played through. And at this point, I've already shown you and told you what's different about it, which is the AI ally, so I don't know if there's really all that much of interest here to see at this point, but um, I think I'm close enough to winning the mission that maybe I'll just play it out. Um, people did seem to like this device that I use in the uh, Allied missions where the special Soviet forces are called out as a separate color. They're orange. Um, 
And those are either elite forces or special commander bases like this here. And I thought that was a pretty cool mechanic when I did it. And, you know, viewers and Ortega seem to agree. So that that's nice. It's always good getting feedback like that. I definitely appreciate getting feedback. Um, constructive criticism is very welcome so that I can make my stuff better. Compliments are even more welcome because it's nice getting complimented, <laughs> I guess. The only type of feedback that I don't like is just trolling, I guess, or completely unhelpful criticism, but at this point I've released enough of my works to the public that I'm very used to that, and so I, I just ignore that kind of feedback, so it's not a big deal. Um, I'm actually a published novelist in addition to various other things, so people seem to think that the story in Red Alert Alternative is particularly good, which thank you, I, I appreciate that people think so. Alright, cool. Now the enemy is, has sold up. Um, that's the end of that attack force. I'll probably want another couple of anti-infantry defenses to deal with that. Uh, and like I said, I'm a, I'm a published novelist, so I'm no stranger to writing stories and the like. So if if Red Alert Alternative story is a highlight, that's probably why. Um, so Leon Von Essling obviously is... An antagonist. Um, he's a puppet of the Soviet Empire and he is the son of Gunter von Essling. I, I don't know if Gunter is how it's pronounced. I, I don't really speak German or know German names so apologies if that's wrong. But anyway, Gunter von Essling who is I guess basically the equivalent of General Mark Shepard in Red Alert. He's the highest ranking Supreme Commander of the Allies, and together with General Stavros, the Greek general, he gives you your orders in the Allied campaign Red Alert. So since Red Alert Alternative, uh, the idea is that the Soviets won, and this follows the Soviet ending of Red Alert Alternative, so Von Essling was killed in this timeline. Maybe he was killed in battle, maybe he was captured and executed. The, the mod doesn't really get into the details, but he died one way or another. And so I thought it would be fun if one of the enemies that you fight is his son. Uh, and so that's where the idea of Leon von Essling came from. And uh, I, think, I feel like Leon's a mildly interesting character for an antagonist who only appears for a few missions. Because unlike, say, General Zukov, um, the sort of main antagonist of the Allied campaign, he's not just this blindly hateful Soviet general who just wants to kill you and doesn't really have any sort of deeper motivations or anything. I am not making good enough use of these airstrikes. I need to pay more attention. Uh, Leon von Essling, he genuinely believes that cooperating with the Soviets is the best thing, because he genuinely believes that their power is so overwhelming that resisting them is hopeless. And from that point of view, resisting the Soviets just causes them to launch their retaliatory attacks to clamp down their uh, their totalitarian regime even harder and basically it's very very bad for the German people when the Soviets feel like they're being rebellious and so they launch purges and kill a lot of people and send a lot of people to gulags and you know generally do the evil things that the Soviet Union is known for having done. And so, you could say from that perspective, and given Leon von Essling's beliefs, that he has perhaps understandable motives and thinks that he's actually doing the best thing. Now, my sympathy for Leon von Essling is limited, because, uh, as is typical for an American, I value freedom very highly. And so the attitude of we need to cooperate with this terrible totalitarian regime instead of fighting for our freedom because it's hopeless. That attitude doesn't sit well with me. You know, it's my American blood showing. So 
Okay. My sympathy for Leon is limited. I won't say that I think he's this incredibly honorable guy. I think you could even say, you know, he's a quizling, he's a traitor, uh, and maybe kind of a, a wimp or a sellout. A defeatist, I think those are, would all be valid criticisms of his point of view. But what I don't think you could say about him is that he's just irredeemably evil. Because he tries to reason with the player's forces. You know, he tries to get them to surrender peacefully. He pro promises them clemency, and he means it. He's completely wrong that they would be given clemency. Uh, you know, they wouldn't. But he, he thinks that maybe they could be. So... Uh, and, you know, he thinks that the rebellion is doomed to failure and that the German people are going to be in a very bad way for having angered the Soviets. So, you know, uh, th those are his motivations. Again, you know, I don't think there's anything brilliant or super deep about any of that, but hopefully it, it makes him a mildly interesting character for what a small role he has. But he's dead now. I just killed him. Uh, the victory trigger is when all of both red factions are dead and Leon is dead. Uh, so, these guys are coming and are going to break like water upon my anti-infantry defenses. And once this assault on my position has been destroyed, we win. Uh, we might be in a position where we win with a few orange guys remaining because you don't have to kill all of orange to win you just have to kill leon and all the red guys uh and that might be a little weird looking but you know we'll see i'm a little irritated that they're going for my harvesters even though i should have known they would do that be just because not that i care that my harvesters die at this point but just because that means it's going to take longer for them to attack my base and die I mean, the mission's clearly over. I'm running out of things to say for this mission, so... Let's go. Let's kill him. Where are you guys even going? There's nothing down there for you to fight. Come to my base and die. You fools. You know, I should honestly be building anti-infantry instead of tanks at this point. Well, I mean, there's the madness, so... I should probably repair this stuff. Oh good, my ally's coming to help. Thanks. Thanks, Sierra. You weren't very helpful once again, but at least you have a nicer color scheme this time. And you know, you tried. That's what counts. And the fact that you're here helped make the mission feel more epic. So, we all appreciate you. I like Sierra. Um, as a character. Like, she's pretty straight-laced. She doesn't have a strong, colorful personality like, uh, like Tanya, for example, but, uh, she feels reliable, like a really reliable member of the Resistance and then, a, and then of Nod. And, you know, I like that. Cool, we win. So that's another mission done. Uh, again, there wasn't that much different about that one. I changed the color of the ally, and I changed how their AI works a little bit. Not really a significant change, but it was a fan favorite mission, so I was like, hey, even though the changes weren't huge, I'll go ahead and play through it again. So that's going to do it for this episode. I will see you next time for more Red Alert Alternative Director's Cut. Hopefully you'll join me for that. Later.